How you doing? This is Sean McVay with Sean's Outdoor Adventures and in this video I'm going to show you how to catch trout and in particular this video is focused on catching stocked trout. So I'm going to be using a spinning rod with a spinning reel which is this style of reel. It's not a fly rod so that's a different type of trout fishing. I also want to say this. This video is filmed in Pennsylvania and this year they started a new thing where the, the kids and youth get to fish a week before the adults. And so the spot we were at, people were saying how they took all these fish out of there. And, um, you know, so it sounded like we were going to have a hard time catching fish. But as it turned out, I ended up catching about close to 30 fish on the day. What I'm going to do is show you some of the footage. And then I'm going to come back and I'll show you the rig that we're using. And then I'll give you some more footage after that. Now we're waiting to uh, have the first cast. 30 minutes. In this hole that apparently has no more fish anymore.
Okay, the rig that I'm using, and as well as my friends next to me, is this was actually developed by my friend John Ortlieb, who's standing next to me fishing. I mean, there might be other people out in the, out there in the world that use this for trout, but as far as I know, he kind of came up with this on his own. Just he kind of got the idea from his steelhead fishing. And what I'm holding here is a seven foot ultralight rod. I tried using this rig that I'm about to show you in the past with my my original trout fishing rod, which was about four foot tall. And uh, it doesn't work as well. It's much more difficult to do with a short rod. And the reason is because of the way this is designed. So I have, I'll step back. I have this seven foot pole here, ultra light. You can see it bends real easy. You could also go with a lightweight, but I wouldn't go more than lightweight because with trout, you want sort of more sensitive rod. And what you're gonna have is this low resistance float it uh, you know, goes under the water very easily and a little swivel here. The line that I'm using is high visibility line. So it's, it's yellow, it's a six pound test. However, just below the float is, is the swivel and from the swivel, I tie a leader on. I usually use two or four pound test. What's on here right now is four pound. When I started off fishing this day, it was two pound test and it was old. And so it started to break on me and I was losing fish because the, um, the line needed to be replaced. So every like year or so you should you know, replace your line. And John had some four pound tests. So I put four pound test on and you have two split shots or three depending on how quick the water's flowing. And then you know your small hook, this is a size uh, 12 I believe, it's 10 or 12. Now this rig that I'm showing you here works extremely well in lakes, ponds, and streams. Now you want to set this according to how deep the stream is. You don't want your bait hitting the bottom of the stream and you'll know if it is because it'll keep pulling your float underneath and getting stuck. But if you get it set right, it's going to bring your bait along close to the bottom of the stream at a nice natural um, presentation, a nice natural float. And that's what really makes this enticing to the fish. I will say this. About halfway through the morning, we had caught about 10 to 15 fish a piece, me and John and his buddy, and the people around us maybe had one, maybe had two, three at best, and they were starting to get annoyed and, and angry actually, like what, what is going on, why can't I catch fish? And so they started to look at us with their binoculars to try to see what we were doing. And eventually they asked like, how are you guys doing this? And we were doing it by this rig that John developed. And it's all about in the presentation, getting a nice natural drift. See, normally if you don't have this kind of a rig, the current pulls your line and that pulls your bait down through the water and it doesn't give as natural of a presentation as this does. The way this is set up, your line hangs perfectly vertical down in the water and floats naturally. And the reason why you have the high visibility line is so you can see your line you can hold it up out of the water and just let the current naturally take your float downstream. Those of you who know me and watch all my videos, you know I'm a pretty spiritual guy and I'm always kind of talking to God internally. And you know, I'm out there fishing and every time I would get a fish on, I would turn my, my video camera on, you know, the little GoPro. And then I would turn it back off until I'd catch another fish. Because you know if you do any editing, it's just a monster to, to have hours of footage and edit out all the dry stuff. So I would just turn it on as soon as I get a fish on. I went to cast on this, this cast 
and I, it was like I had this inner sense. It was like a, a spiritual thing. It's, it was saying to me, turn the camera on now. So I cast it out, and I'm thinking about it. The, my line hits the water, and it was like, turn the camera on now. So I was like, okay, I'll turn the camera on now. So I turn on the camera, and what you're about to see shocked me. I caught my first Palomino of my life, because I never really fished for him. When I was younger, John and I were fishing, and I had one on him. We got it to my feet, and we didn't have a net. And so John jumped in the water to try to scoop it up, and the fish turned and snapped my line. And that's the only time I ever had one. And, um, you know, there it's a novelty. People go after them because it's something different. But I usually let the crowds go after them. I say, you go after them. I'm just going to have fun and fish. Well, in this situation, there was one Palomino, and people were fishing for it for hours all day, and nobody could catch it. And here I am, I cast out, and I get a bite, and all of a sudden I see the Palomino take off, and I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, I couldn't believe it. I caught the Palomino with this rig, and it was, it was awesome. It was the first one I ever got. So check out the footage here. Oh my gosh. Get the net. Bite your line out, bud. Go, kids.
Well, folks, I want to thank you so much for tuning into this episode. I know I enjoyed it, and I hope you did as well. And that's the whole point. I, I want everyone to enjoy their outings when they're out fishing. And when you're constantly getting stuck on the, the bottom of the stream and breaking your line and not catching fish, it's frustrating. And I didn't get caught on the bottom of the stream one time, and I caught tons of fish. And so I just want to go over the rig one more time. And I also want to give you a resource so that you can get all this. So when I first put out a video on how to do this, um, people were constantly emailing me, where do you get the flow, where do you get this, where do you get that? And so I went to John, I said, look, you're the one who kind of developed all this and it's just incredible. How about you just set up a website so people can go there, get a whole package deal, and that's, that way they get everything they need. So he went ahead and did that for me and set it up so that you have a resource to go to. That's going to be in a link in the description section of this video. So uh, just to go over it real quick, first of all, you want like a seven, seven and a half foot rod at least. And what that enables you to do is hold your rod up like this, keeps your line up out of the water so you get a nice natural float drift when your, you know, your float's going down through the stream. Another important aspect of the long pole is you can cast it because you need your float up high enough to um, enable you to have all this line hanging down for the correct drift. Now if you're in a more shallow stream, let's say it's two foot deep, your tippet piece, this piece here, is going to be half this length. Mine is currently close to close to four foot long. It's about three and a half foot tippet because it was a deep stream. But if it was more shallow, I'd probably have a two foot tippet and then that way you can make the adjustment with your float up above it because you got to keep in mind the lowest your float can go is where the swivel is right there. Now you don't have to have the high visibility line, but it does help you see it. When you're fishing uh, with a spinning reel, like what I am here, you typically want a monofilament line because it's, it's more flexible and it doesn't kink and jump off your spool real bad. So typically a monofilament line is what you're going to want to use. In this case, some people use braided line. Actually, John uses braided. And next time I buy line, maybe I'll switch over to braided. I don't know. I haven't decided yet. But something like this will work perfectly fine for you. And again, it doesn't have to be high visibility, but it helps you see where your line's at so you can make sure you keep it out of the water. And then your tippet piece is typically going to be fluorocarbon. It's a strong line, and it's very invisible once it's underwater, which is what you want when you're fishing for trout. So again, I'll have a link for John's website in the description section of this video. I'll also put in a link for my other video on how to catch trout where I was mainly at a lake. So you can see how this works at a lake. And you'll see in that video if you watch it, I was pulling out fish after fish after fish and people standing right next to me weren't catching anything at all. And it was all because of this rig and this presentation. Thanks so much for tuning in. Make sure you also check out my website. Until next time, take care and God bless. All right, so here's the crew for this morning. State your name in your case. What's up? It's a recording, dude. Oh, oh. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> this is not being edited out either. I didn't know it was on. I was... Would you state your name in your case? John Orley, trout fishing. Tony Angel Sandy, tagging along trout fishing. There you have it. Now we're waiting to uh, have the first cast in this hole that apparently has no more fish anymore. It is 4.50 in the a.m. April, whatever it is, 16th, I guess. Opening day of trout season here in Pennsylvania, for most of the state anyway. Uh, people who live in the southeast of PA, they get to open two weeks early, which kind of messes it up for us because now a bunch of them are up here in my area. Crowd in the streams, shoulder to shoulder. I am currently headed to meet up with my good buddy John Ortlieb at a spot about an hour and 15 minutes from my house. John has been fishing at this spot forever, pretty much, his whole life. And uh, I started fishing with him in high school. The first time, <laughs> this is kind of funny, I didn't expect to tell you this, but the first time I fished this spot with him, 
was the day after our senior prom, I believe it was. I had to actually drop my date off after the prom so I could meet up with John to drive up to his cabin for the night. Um, so anyway, that's where we're headed right now, and it's gotten busier and busier over the years. So I'm expecting it to be very crowded, but we're gonna have a good time anyway. That's what it's all about. I am very rusty, actually. Uh, haven't fished since last year, and I only fished like two or three times last year. Just having all these kids now, I don't have much time. Uh, so I expect to miss a lot of bites. Um, but John's been fishing for a couple weeks now, so I expect him to be razor sharp and nailing those fish. But we're gonna have a good time. Let's go see what happens here. Praise the Lord. All right, guys, what's the report? Killed him. Killed him. 